So we're going to continue our series tonight, 100%. Stop living in the red and get plugged in instead. So before we start, why don't we all pray this together. God, my heart is open. My mind is ready. Make me better. Today. By your word. I believe it. I receive it. I'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I've got a question for you guys tonight. And, uh, and this question might bring up some not-so-happy memories, but I feel like because we're besties, right, because we, we have trust, you know, like there, there's a bond here between me and all of you, um, and so I just feel like it, you just got to be honest. We just got to be honest with each other. And so my question for you is, have you ever experienced being the person who in a large group of people gets picked last? I know, it's not the happiest of questions, the happiest of questions, but have you ever experienced being in a big group and being picked last? How many of you guys would say, for you it's like, you're in gym class or something like that and there's like a sports happening and the teacher's like, oh right, you and you, you're captains, you gotta pick who's on your team and then you experience what it was like to be picked last. Does anybody feel that pain? It's okay. Most of us in here have felt it. I feel your pain. Okay, how about this one? How many of you guys uh, have been in like class and your teacher's like, all right, this is a group project. And so what I'm gonna need you to do is find a partner. And you're like, oh no, none of my friends are in this class. And so you're you're looking around frantically because you don't wanna be that person without a partner. And then like, you're, you're finding yourself like, oh no, I'm gonna be the person without a partner. And you're like looking around for that other person who doesn't have a partner and you lock eyes and you're like, you were thinking about me, weren't you? I was thinking, yeah, th- th- this was meant to happen. Uh, how many of you guys have experienced what I think is the worst of all in, uh, is in gym class f- for social dance? I don't know how your teachers did this, but why can't the teachers just match you up like, Make a line, make a line, all right, walk forward, that's the person. Instead, it's like, all right, everybody, find a partner. And you're like, oh, God, oh, God. And so, like, you got to go find somebody that you've probably never talked to. You've definitely never held their hand. And the worst part is, as soon as the teacher says find a partner, your heart starts beating, your hands start sweating, and you're like, they're going to think I'm like this super sweaty person because oh, I can't stop this. Like my hands are getting clammy. This is so awkward. While you're dancing, you, it's like sweat's dripping off the bottom of your hands. Just the worst. Just the worst. Just me? Just me? All right. All right. How about this one? You're like hanging out with your friends somewhere, maybe outside school. I don't know where you are. But, you know, you're with all your buddies and you're having fun and your parents are picking you up from whatever this is. And so slowly, your friends start to get picked up, and then you find yourself all alone as the last person, and you're like, Mom, did you forget about me? <laughs> like, your friends are there, you're like, what's up? And then they're gone, you're like, oh, where's my mom and dad? <laughs> feel that pain? All right. Well, I feel like since you were honest with me, it's only fair that I would be honest with you. I think, you think that's fair? Should I be honest with you? All right. So I, I have experienced something like this that I can remember. Now, I'm not sure if you guys have felt this pain before. I might just be like this really uh, like odd person for having this fear. Maybe you have. I'll find out whether you laugh when I talk about it. But has anybody in here experienced, or would you consider yourself one of those people that just hate putting your hand up and asking a question in the middle of class? Is there anybody like that in here? I am not alone. I am not alone. All right. When I was in school, I was like super afraid of putting my hand up and asking a question. Now, I don't know why I was so afraid of it, but I think it was like I was afraid that maybe people would be judging me or like I would sound stupid or ask something that's completely wrong and I would just be humiliated in front of the whole class. And so for me, um, I was always afraid to be asking the question. And uh, And so sometimes I would be able to muster up some courage and be like, you know what, I'm going to get over this. I'm going to answer this question because I have no idea what they're talking about and I need to pass these tests. And so, you know, I'd I'd, I'd put up my hand, but on the inside, I'm like freaking out, freaking out. 
And, uh, and so I would, be like, I would be like trying to convince myself to put my hand down. Like you guys know how like firefighters, um, like they coach people off of like burning buildings and stuff. Uh, like, so for me, this, I would do this to myself. So I'd be sitting in class with my hand up. On the outside, it's like normal. On the inside, it's like, don't you do it. Put your hand down. Everybody's staring at you. This is a stupid question. Don't you ask it. Put your hand down. Forget this ever happened. And I'm sitting there like. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes the voices would get the best of me. Sometimes I would, you know, I would Go, I would beat through it, and I would, answer the, I would ask the question, whatever. But the worst part is, is that on those times when the voices would get the best of me, as soon as I put my hand down, the teacher's like, oh, Christian, did you have a question? And you're like, seriously? I have my hand up for like 15 minutes. I, I'm literally dehydrated from how much I've been sweating from how nervous I was. And then so I'd try to act all cool, like, no, no, I, fi- I figured it out. In my head, I'm like, I have no idea what this class is even about. <laughs> no idea. These are not fun experiences. I, and I know you guys have experienced them because of your laughing. But maybe some of you guys have experienced the opposite. Anybody experienced the opposite? Maybe, like, you have been the person that was chosen. Like, maybe for you, it was getting an award. Anybody got an award in their life? Yeah. <laughs> Received an award? <laughs> cool, cool. All right. How about this one? How about, uh, how about there... I can only say this from the guy's perspective, but for the girls, just swap the roles, the genders. Uh, there's like the girl that, that everybody has a crush on, and then you find out that she has a crush on you, and you're like, what's up? <laughs> you get chosen. You're the chosen one. Karate kid. Maybe for you, it was a sports team. Well, I remember uh, I received an award once in my life. It's pretty awesome. And, uh, and so I wanted to show you guys uh, what it was because I think it's just awesome to remember this experience. So this is for my grade 9 grad, all right? Now, does anybody remember the Jar Jar Binks grad that I talked about before? Sure do. All right. All right, because there was a Jar Jar Binks grade 9 grad. This was the one that was formal right before it, okay? So there's no naked Jar Jar Binks running through this grad. If you don't know why there was a naked Jar Jar Binks running through one of my grads, ask your, part, or your neighbor after the service. I won't get into it today. But uh, so, so here we are. We're at my grad. My parents are with me. Like, you know that one where you, you like, rent a suit and, like, you look all fancy and everybody's there and there's the dance and, and all that fun stuff? Well, there was a part where they would give awards. And so what would happen is, uh, and this is, like, a true story. I'm, I'm not making this up. The teacher would, you know, get up and be like, okay, we want to give some awards to some students, blah, blah, blah. And so the first one, can you guys read that? Most likely to become famous. So they call up the student, and it's like, oh, isn't that nice? You know, that guy, he had so much charisma, or that girl had so much charisma. And then the next one is like, anyone can read that one? Most likely to start a business. I don't know if you guys have had these ones. These are like the really, you know, the really smart people where they're like, Maybe they don't have the best social skills, but you're like, you are going to be a millionaire one day. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many friends you have, because you are going to be able to buy friends with how much money you make. And then, and then there's this one, most likely to change the world. That's like for the person that's always, you know, I'm student president, always trying to make change, always promoting, always volunteering, just amazing. And then my award came, and it, I remember the look on my parents' face um, when the teachers called it out, and, and this, is what, this is what I got. <laughs> Most time spent in the office. Uh, and so I took that to heart because an award is an award. <laughs> and so I just feel like, you know what, that's an honor. Thank you. Uh, thank you for, for giving that to me. And so that's my experience of being chosen. And the truth is there's, there's a lot of people uh, in the Bible who have some experiences like this. Now, i got to be honest, there's probably no one in the Bible who's had uh, an award as prestigious as most time spent in the office. Um, y'all didn't laugh at that. Do you not know what that word means? <laughs> I'm sure no one in the Bible won that award. Uh, but if they work hard enough one day, hopefully in heaven they'll get that from Jesus or something. 
Uh, but there are some pretty cool stories, and I want to share just a few with you real quick because I believe that these uh, can impact our lives and can relate to us. So the first guy I want to talk about is a guy named David. Anybody heard of a guy named David? <laughs> David, my boy. So David is this young kid, right? So this is how the story goes. He's a shepherd hanging out with the sheep. He's got a bunch of brothers, all right? Now, he's the youngest and the shortest and the ugliest. Uh, I put ugliest in because I just feel like it fit. Well, uh, but the Bible just says he was the runt. So whatever, whatever the runt is, that's what he was. Uh, and so, so here he is. He gets called to come back to his dad because God is looking for a new king. God wants to put a new king over Israel, who is his people, because the current king sucks. And so they call David in, and he's lined up with all of his brothers. Now imagine this. Here's all of David's brother, all taller, stronger, buffer, better facial hair, uh, Nikes, uh, Versace shirts, uh, the whole deal. And then there's David, and he's wearing the Value Village clothes, because uh, he's got, like, sheep poop on the side. Don't worry, I shop at Value Village. Don't hate. Don't hate. And so... And so here's the, here's the prophet. Prophet's like, ah, nope, 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 nope. Oh, gets to David. That's the one that God wants to choose to become king. Now, the reason this story is so cool is because in a, from a human perspective, from the human mind or eye, you would not have chosen David to be king. But God is like, you know what? I'm choosing you to become king. Another guy, his name's Gideon. Anybody heard of Gideon? Awesome. So the story of Gideon is that he's this, like, he's kind of this loser type guy. Um, I don't really know how else to explain him. But he's got really low self-esteem. He is, uh, like, super insecure and just, like, a wimpy, wimpy type of person. God shows up and is like, hey, man, I've actually called you to be this great warrior to defeat this massive army and, uh, and save my people. And Gideon's like, are you serious, dude? Like... I get like cramps when I sweep the floor. How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to take out an army? But the reality is like everything God said comes to pass. This guy like takes out this massive army and it's crazy. Another guy, does anyone remember when jo uh, Joel talked about Mo? Yeah. Remember Mo? You rem remember how Mo had the Adam Sandler accent? Does anyone remember that? Oh gosh, that was awesome. Well, Mo is short for Moses, all right? Now, the reason that Mo had an Adam Sandler accent when Joel told you guys about him is that the Bible says that Moses actually had like a speech problem. He had a, some sort of speech impediment. I don't know if it was uh, a lisp. I don't know if it was uh, stuttering. I don't know if it was Tourette's. I don't know what it was, but he had some sort of problem where he was like insanely insecure to talk in public. God shows up. It's like, hey, Mo. I know that you have trouble speaking, but actually, I've called you to be my voice to the Egyptians. And the Egyptians are like basically the world superpower. And Moses is like, are, 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 are you serious? Like, I can't speak in front of people. And God's like, but I've chosen you. So whatever it is that you've disqualified yourself from, I, I don't count that. I've chosen you to be my voice. And he literally saves and defeats the superpower of Egypt. The last person I want to share with you guys about is a guy named Joseph. This guy gets thrown in a pit to die, sold as a slave. Then he gets framed as a pervert, put into prison for like 13 years. And then God uses him to become this like political, politically powerful dude who like becomes super rich and actually saves God's people. And it's like, how did a guy with that story end up being this insane world changer? But the truth is, is that God chose these guys to make a difference. This is a side note, and I don't know if this is going to connect anybody, but I just wanted to encourage you guys, if there's anybody in here who's like, I really would like to make a difference in politics or like government, um, maybe there's some hands, I don't know. I believe that God wants to use your life to make a massive difference. I believe that God wants to bring you influence and power to expand his kingdom to make a difference for Jesus. And so if you're in here tonight and that's your dream, I don't want you to be afraid of it. I know we don't usually talk about politics and faith in the same thing. Usually they don't really mix in conversation. But I believe that God wants to use you. So don't be afraid of that dream. I encourage you to chase it with God as the center of it. 
Now, these are some pretty cool stories. Awesome. You told us some stuff. These guys, they, you know, their lives sucked and then they did awesome things. That's awesome. But why does that matter to us? Why, why should we care about this? And I think that's a great question. I'm glad that you guys asked uh, because I have the answer for you, believe it or not. The reason that this matters to us is that God chooses people to change the world. God chooses people to change the world. He chose a bunch of people that I've talked about, a bunch of people that I haven't talked about. He's chosen people from, from that time and all the way up until now. Like there is like thousands of people that God has chosen individually to make a difference in the world. And the reality is, is that God wants to choose you and use your life to make a difference today. See, I believe that your story can be added to these stories of people who've made a difference. That one day when we're long gone, there'll be people who say, oh, so-and-so, this is what they did with their life. They followed God, they served God, and this is what God did through their life. Look at the lives that have been changed through them. And so when we use that, that title, 100% Get Plugged In, we're talking about getting plugged into God's purpose for your life. And so God has a specific purpose and plan for every single person in here. It's in the Bible. He ta- God tells us that straight up. I have a plan and a purpose for your life. Now, you might have been that kid that got picked last for things. But the truth is, is that God is saying, I'm choosing you. You might have been the kid that didn't get picked last for things. And God is saying, I'm choosing you. See, we've all had different lives that we've grown up. We've all had different experiences in school. But the reality is is that God has chosen every single person in here, regardless of whether you believe it or not, to make a difference in the lives of others. And I want to read read through a few Bible verses with you. I want you guys to read the bolded parts with me out loud because these are things that God has said about us and, and about the purpose that he has for our lives. So let's throw up the first one. Can you guys read this? Do the bold part all together, for you are a chosen people. A chosen people. God is saying to you, you are a chosen people. You are a chosen people. Next one. This one's Ephesians 1.4. Read the bold part. In love, he predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself. I understand that's a bit wordy. Basically what that is saying is that before you were even born, God thought about you, thought about your life, thought about this moment, and has already pre-planned things for your life, for you to do, for you to make a difference. God has already pre-planned those things. What's the next one? Ephesians 2.10, the bold part, which God prepared beforehand. So what did he prepare beforehand? Good works. God has prepared for us good works. Good works are not like, hey man, uh, you know, I've prepared for you to sweep the floor and vacuum this carpet. God's like, I've prepared for you to make a difference where people look at you and say, that person right there made a difference in my life for eternity. That's That's what he's talking about when he talks about good works. Let's read the next one. John 15, 16. This is God talking to us. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit. Now, God is not saying, I've chosen you to go become a a fruit farmer. All right? And this is the Bible, so like they used a certain language back then. When he talks about fruit, he's talking about things that add value to eternity. So like, every time that you're kind to someone who's in need, every time that you love someone who maybe hasn't experienced love, is in a hard place, every time you give advice to someone, you're adding value to them. Every time you introduce someone to Jesus and you help them grow in their faith, you're adding to eternity. And so that's what he's talking about. He's, and look at what he says. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. That's crazy. That he chose us. That means he chose you while you still didn't care about him. He chose you before you cared about him and said, I want to use you to make a difference in the lives of others. And so this is amazing. God wants to have you on his side. God has a plan for you. God has chosen you. So my question is, what, what is your story going to say? 
what is your story going to say? Because your, everybody's story is going to be different, but your story can be added to those other stories that we talked about tonight of somebody who was used by God to make a difference in the lives of others. In Matthew 22, it says, For many are called, but few are chosen. And so every single one of you here is designed for a unique purpose. You need to understand that. God knows you personally, loves you personally, and has a purpose for your life. But just because he's predestined that, just because he's planned that for you, doesn't mean that you're automatically going to walk into it. You have to choose to walk into it. You have to choose to respond to what God's done for you. And so I believe that there's tons of people in here who are like, I want to get connected to that. I want to get connected to God's purpose. I want to be a part of being used to change the lives of others. But I'm not really sure how to do that. And so I just want to get real practical and just tell you a little bit about how this looks in our lives because did you know that actually a big part of God's purpose, a big part of connecting to God's purpose is getting plugged in to his church and serving in his church. Now, we don't always talk about this, but there's a lot of people here who are serving. So did you know that everybody from all of the sound, all of the videos, all of the cameras, the bus drivers, all of the leaders here, the music, the speakers, Everybody, everybody here is serving and nobody's getting paid. There's not like a staff here of people who like somebody pays them to take care of teenagers and kind of put on a fun night. We're all here because we love you. We're all here because we believe that God has a purpose for our lives, but we also believe that God has a purpose for your lives and that's why we serve. Because we want to introduce you to that. We want to help you grow in that, we want to help you grow in your walk with God. And so I thought it would be cool tonight to show you guys um, a few photos. I've asked a few people to uh, send us some photos of themselves. These are people you're going to know. Um, these are leaders here who that when they, when they were coming, they started just like you. And so what they've done is they've held up a piece of paper with the name of someone who, when they were young, was serving and helped them grow closer to God. So let's throw up the first. Can you guys see this well? Is this table in the way? That's pretty sweet. That's Josh. For all you didn't know. Adam Mills, that's pretty cool. Let's see the next one. Lucas, everybody knows Lucas. That's Lucas, so Lucas wrote Joel. There's many people that have impacted these people, but this is just to show you of where these guys were at and the influence that you can have in people's lives. This is Sierra. She wrote Zach. We call him Zach Efron. This is Brayden. He wrote Corey O'Dell. That's pretty cool. It's Katie, Sarah Babick. I think that's the last one. We, oh, and Emma, Corey Flanagan. Very, very cool. And so the reason that I wanted to show you these photos and I'm going to cue the sound guys because they haven't turned the piano on. I don't know if they're paying attention. But um, all of these people started just like you. All of these people came when they were young. Like when we started coming to Risen, like when I started coming to Risen, do you know why I came to Risen? Because I thought the girls were cute. And I was like, this is cool. There's lots of girls here. At school, no girls talk to me. So at least like three talk to me when I'm at Risen, right? Like that's, I'm not even joking. Like that's why I first was like, I'm coming back to Risen. And it was through coming back over and over again that I started to meet some of these leaders and experience what God had for my life. And it absolutely changed my life. I've been here for 10 years. I've been coming to Risen since I was 15 years old. And I tell you, I was not the person I am today standing here. But I didn't get here just on my own and just, you know, reading the Bible. It took people who were like, I'm gonna believe in this kid and I'm gonna serve God because I believe that he can make a difference. And today, they have smiles on their face when they see me do stuff like this. But it's not just about us because the reality is, is that God is calling you. So it isn't like the leaders here are like the special anointed people who are like, you know, God really has given us special powers to help people, but you guys, you know, you just keep doing what you're doing, hang out, like, God's like, no, I want to use your life to make a difference. One day, there's going to be people on this screen 
with a paper in their hand with your name on it. Because that's what God wants to use your life to do, to impact people, to bring people to Jesus. And I don't know if you know this, but every Friday and every Sunday, there are people who are sitting in the seats that you're sitting in right now who the Bible says need to experience the love and forgiveness of God. They need it. And God says that he wants to use you to make that happen. He wants to use you to make that happen. Jesus just doesn't show up to people's, you know, room at night before they go to bed. They're trolling Snapchat. You don't, snow, you don't troll Snapchat like that. What a noob. Instagram. And then Jesus show up and be like, hey, been thinking about you lately. Was thinking that you could give your life to me today, actually. That's not how it works. Jesus works through people to spread the news of what he's done for us. And so the way that we connect to that is we get plugged into church. Now you might be here tonight and you might be saying to yourself, yeah, that sounds amazing, but what difference could I ever make? How, what could I ever do great for God? And as I start to close, I wanna share this story with you guys because I just, it's impacted me and it's stuck with me and it's a great visual. There's a story of a boy, he's on a beach, right? And on this beach, there's millions of starfish that have been washed up onto the tide. Super sunny day, millions of starfish. The sun is drying out all these starfish and so they're, they're dying. Basically millions of starfish are dying in the sun and there's this little boy on the beach um, trying to save them. Now, little boy, he's, you know, he's throwing them in one at a time into the water. Meanwhile, there's this man walking a little bit off in the distance. He can see this boy and so he's walking up to the boy and he can see there's millions of starfish all over the beach, right? He walks up to this boy, and this boy's small, so he can, only, he can only pick up one of these things at a time. So the boy's picking one, throwing it in the water, walking back, picking up one, throwing it. In. So this guy walks up to the boy, and he says to the boy, do you really think that you're going to be able to make a difference? There are millions of these starfish. And this boy doesn't really answer, just kind of ignores it, bends down, picks up another starfish, walks over to the beach, throws it in. And then he looks at the man and he says, I bet it made a difference to that one. And I believe that that is a story that can connect to our lives. We might not be able to change every single person around us, but God wants to use you to change the people in your world. See, if that boy didn't do anything about that, no starfish would have been saved. And I believe that if we don't get connected to our purpose, there can be people who miss their opportunity to be introduced to Jesus because we are that bridge in their life. And so the question that I'm gonna ask you guys again is that we know that God's calling us. We know that God wants to use our lives, but will we respond? Will we choose to say, you know what, God? I do wanna make a difference with my life and I do wanna get connected to a place like this and I do wanna let you work through me to introduce people to you. And I believe that there's many of you in here who are like, yes, that's what I want so badly and you can just feel it on the inside. You're like, God is speaking to me right now. This is, this is what I need. And so we're gonna do something a little bit different tonight but under your seats, everybody look under your seats. You actually have a card taped with a pen. So everyone can pull that out. And so you can start filling those cards out as I'm talking. But what these cards are, these are an opportunity for you to tell us that you wanna get connected. And so what I'm gonna ask you guys tonight is that we're closing right now and some of you guys might be antsy and you might be you know, wanting to go party, but just for a couple more moments, just let the people beside you focus because this might be their time. Even if it's not your time, it could be the person beside you. And see, God wants to use your life to make a difference and it all starts with getting plugged in. And so for those of you that are like, I wanna, I wanna be a part of this, I want you to just put your name on, check off that little box that says I'm interested in volunteering. And then there's a part that asks you if you're interested in anything. And so you might not know what you're interested in and that's okay. But there's a lot of things that happen here that you can be a part of. Maybe for you, you're like, I would love to learn how to do production stuff. I'd love how to do like cameras or sound. 
Maybe you're musical and you're like, I'd love to learn, you know, how to do some music stuff. Maybe for you, you're like, I love meeting people. I want to be a part of like the people team. So maybe it's like the coat check or the sign in. And you can just put like, I want to, you know, I want to connect with people. You could put that on there. We're going to help you. Now, Risen's not the only place that you can serve. There's places on, on Sundays that you can serve too. And so for each of you where you're at, I just want to give you an opportunity to let us know that you're interested, okay? And so what we're going to do, we're going to give you a little bit more time to fill these out, but our, some of our leaders are going to come forward. They're not going to pass the baskets yet. Um, they might have to pass them back if, they're, if they've done it too early. And so we just want to collect these cards because we want to connect with you. We want to let you know. If you don't have a pen that's working, ask, your, ask the person beside you. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can put the pen in the basket if you like. I really believe that God wants to start something in your life that will change your life forever. That you wouldn't just be here learning about him, but that you would actually get to be a part of other people learning about him. That you would get to be a part of, imagine this, imagine somebody who's broken and hurting, who has no idea about who God is, and then they meet you. And then through their connection with you, they get an opportunity to learn about who Jesus is and accept his forgiveness in their life. There's nothing like that. So we're gonna continue to pass these baskets around and collect these cards. If for some reason the basket goes by you, what I'm gonna encourage you to do is just come up to the front after and just put your card on the front. And so we're almost finished with the baskets. And I believe that God is gonna use your life to change other people's lives. And we're gonna connect with you this week and the weeks following to help you get into a place where you can start to impact the people in your life. You guys just look up here for one more moment. So it'll literally take two minutes. We didn't want to end this night without giving an opportunity to make Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of your life. Because everything Christian's talking about, everything about getting plugged into church and, and the reason why people show up here, yes, A, it's because we love you, but, it, but more importantly, it's because we love Jesus. And we believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord, that he's our Savior, and that he wants to impact your life. And so many of you might be sitting in here tonight questioning, like, why would I, why would I do that if I'm not connected to it? And so tonight I want to give you an opportunity to be connected. If you're in here, with, can, we just, can we just bow our heads, close our eyes, just take a moment to relax. We're about to go party. We're about to go get free popsicles. About to get wild. But for one more moment, if we could just relax. Because there's people in this room tonight. There's people in this room that have a relationship with Jesus. But there's people in this room that don't. And so tonight, if you're somebody who says, I need to begin a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ went to a cross. And he died and then he rose again so that we would be forgiven. He, on the cross, he bore our sin. He bore the weight of our sin. We don't need to carry that any longer. The weight of that is not our responsibility any longer. In Jesus, we find forgiveness. In Jesus, we find weight lifted off of our shoulders. We find a new start. We find a new beginning. And so tonight, if you're somebody who says, I want to pray that prayer, I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of my life, on the count of three of you, just slip your hand up. One, two, three, slip your hands up across this room. I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of my life. This decision is the best decision you could ever make. You can put your hands down and raise it right across this room. Whether you put this hand, your hand up, whether you're praying it along with your heart, whatever the case may be, if you have a mouth, if you have words to say, just repeat this after me. Say, God, thank you so much 
for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross and pay for my sins. Today I declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. I declare I will not live the same way, but I am new. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Come on, raise an amen. Amen.